Hi, welcome to Amanda's Book Corner. I'm Amanda, and this is my review of Bolu Babalola's first book, Love and Color, Mythical Tales from Around the World Retold. So I first heard about Love and Color sometime in spring 2020, and as soon as I saw it, I thought it looked really interesting, and I was really excited to, to get my hands on this book and read it. It was supposed to come out last year, I think in the summertime, although I might be mistaken, but at least here in the United States, it didn't come out until this year in April. Although I think in the UK it was actually released last year, so they were lucky to get it first. But here in the United States, we had to wait a little bit longer, but that's okay. It was completely worth the wait. So I was really excited when Book of the Month chose it as one of their add-on selections in April. I've been subscribed to Book of the Month for about two years, a little bit over two years. As I said, I had been excited for this book, so I was thrilled when it was included in Book of the Month. That was, I added it immediately as soon as I saw it. For whatever reason, I decided to wait until summertime to read this book. I was actually going to read it along with some other books by African authors and set in different African countries. I ended up changing my reading plans a little bit, but I still wanted to read this one right away. So I started reading it probably the beginning of August and I took about a month with it because I really wanted to savor the stories and let each one sink in before moving on to the next one. So Love and Color is a collection of short stories. The first 10 stories are retellings of myths and legends from different cultures and countries around the world. And the final three stories are originals that uh, Bolu Babalola came up with uh, without adapting anything from another tale. So I don't think I've ever actually read a short story collection before. This might have the honor of being the first short story collection I've ever read. So with that in mind, when I was going into this book, I wasn't really sure what to expect. I wasn't sure if I would like the format. I wasn't sure if I would really feel moved by stories that are condensed down to having a full beginning, middle, end arc in such a short space of time, you know, only maybe 20 pages or so. So for me, this is kind of an experiment to see if I actually like short story collections. But based on my reaction to this book, I can say I do, and I, would, I actually am excited to try out some additional short story collections in the coming months and years. So as I mentioned, most of the stories, the first 10, are retellings of existing stories and myths and legends. And although those original stories are often quite ancient and go back centuries, if not thousands of years, what the author did here is she really adapted them for, well, not all of them, but several of them she adapted for a modern setting. So for example, one of the stories that she adapted is from Greek mythology, Psyche and Eros. So here, instead of being Greek gods living on Mount Olympus, they're actually in modern times working on a fashion magazine called Olympus. Isn't that clever? Other stories update the characters to, for example, being a rising singer who's trying to make it in the entertainment world, to college students who share a wall in their, in their dorm, and even kind of a dystopian city uh, where Nefertiti from Egypt is kind of a hit woman, <laughs> but a classy one. Bolu Babalola really updates each of the stories in its own individual way. Some of them do feel like they're still kind of set in some kind of past time. For example, the very first story, I wasn't entirely sure when it was supposed to be set. I think it was actually maybe the hardest story to understand, if that makes sense. I think all of the other stories after that were a little bit more straightforward or at least easier to understand what the time and setting was. But the first one, I think, felt the most true to the original story in terms of tone and, and setting. Although I'm not sure. Um, that's another thing I should probably mention is all of these stories, out of the 10 stories that she updated and retold here, I can't say I was really familiar with any of them. I mean, of course, I, I am aware of who Nefertiti is, and of course I'm aware of the Greek gods, and I was vaguely familiar with Psyche and Eros, but I'm not exactly an expert on Greek mythology or ancient Egypt or anything like that, so those were probably the only two I was even remotely familiar with. All of the other ones were completely new to me, so I'm not really a good person to say how much she changed the stories. I mean, obviously the settings were changed, but I couldn't really tell you how much she changed with the characters, with the events that happened within the stories. But I do know, based on our author's note, that she really did try to stay true to the core of the characters, but also updating them so they fit with our modern morals and sense of what is good and what's bad. So for example, she said that a lot of the older stories, they were filled with sexism and misogyny and you know, literally stealing a girl who has no agency and no control over the situation. So here, she tried to center the women to make sure that they always have agency 
that they always have a say in what's happening. And I think for modern readers, that really elevates the stories. It makes them a lot more relatable and enjoyable and like something that you can take something away from and feel good about it, feel empowered, feel like you learned something and just feel good about the story overall. Well, actually, no, one more story I was familiar with is 1001 Nights, but again, it's not something I've read. <laughs> so yeah, I, I'm not familiar with anything. Apparently I'm ignorant about everything, which is funny because I was an English major. You would think I would have some familiarity with these stories, but no, no, I don't, sorry. <laughs> So out of the 10 retellings, I think my favorites were, and I'm sorry if I butchered these names, I'm not sure how to pronounce them, but my favorites were Scheherazade, Atem, Psyche, Naleli, and Thisbe. I think those were my favorites of the retellings. And then moving on to the three original stories that the author wrote, I actually really liked all three. I think they really fit perfectly with the retellings. The tone and the style, I think, matched throughout all of the stories, regardless of whether they were retellings or originals. So that's really good. I really like the one about Tiara. I thought that was a really beautiful one. It's one of the few times where I see kind of like a second chance love. I thought it was really nicely done. That was one of my favorites overall out of all the stories, but I really like that one. I also liked her second one about Oren. I thought that one was really, it had a different tone. I was, whereas the previous one, Tiara was a bit like heavy and emotional and it made you feel like I don't know, it kind of made you cry for the character, but also like happy cry at the end when, you know, things change. With Oren, I thought it was more fun and lighthearted. It was kind of poking at dating culture and going on dates with people that are probably not a good fit for you at all. And maybe you put on kind of a front to look a certain way, but they're not, they're not all that. And I thought it was really fun and cute how it all came together at the end. And her last story I thought was interesting because it's probably the only one where the characters didn't have first names ascribed to them, but but the prince of the, of the story had the last name Babalola, just like the author. And it clicked for me that this seemed to be a really cute story of her own parents, who I, I assume that's what it is. I think maybe she mentioned that in the author's note. But when I was reading it, I, I thought, hey, this must be about her parents and how they kind of grew up together and became friends and then fell in love when they were growing up in Nigeria and before they moved over to the UK. So I thought it was nice how she wrote it. I thought it was really cute. Kind of remind me of my own parents. I mean, they, they're not Nigerian, of course. They grew up here in Washington State, but it was just a cute love story and it, it warmed my heart. Another thing I will say is that the author has a really great command of language and not just command of language but she i feel like her stories were diversely written not just in terms of what the story was about or the setting but i feel like the way she wrote the stories really showed off her excellent writing skills they each have their own tone they each have their own like she she goes from different tenses for example first first person or third person different genres you could say for example i would i, I think i mentioned it the Nefertiti one kind of felt more dystopian. Some of them have like more action and adventure and some of them are more quiet and cute and about like maybe college students or something. So I, I think the stories were diverse and diversely written, but they still felt cohesive and they never felt repetitive either. That's another thing I was worried about. I thought, what if the stories feel like too similar to each other? But for me, they didn't. To me, they each felt distinct and distinct enough that even now I could look at any story and say, oh yeah, I remember that one in its specific details, which is good because I don't want them to all blur together. So all in all, I really loved this book. I thought it was excellently written and I can't wait to read more from Bolu Babalola. From what I understand, she's working on a full-length novel called Honey and Spice and I think that's going to come out next year, at least I hope it does, but whenever it does come out I will absolutely be reading it probably on the day it's published. So I was really impressed with Love and Color. I hope you read it too. Whether or not you read short story collections, I think you'll like it because as I said, I have never really read them before, but I I enjoyed it and got a lot out of it. And from what I've seen of other reviews who of people who do read short story collections, they also seem to like it quite a bit. So while I had to wait over a year for this book, it was well worth the wait. I'm really glad that I finally got to read it. And I gave this book four and a half stars. If you want to read my full review written out with probably some additional thoughts that I forgot to mention here, I'll link to it in the description where you can read the full review on my blog.
So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like, subscribe, comment, ring the bell, all of that good stuff so you always see all my latest videos. You'll notice that I'm starting to switch over to just doing individual videos for each book I review instead of doing the wrap ups because I talk too much. I have too many thoughts and opinions. I don't know. So I don't think I'll be doing the wrap ups anymore, but I will continue doing videos for each book I read. And I read, I don't know, probably depending on the month between like six and 12 books. So I'll have plenty of content coming your way. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. See you in the next one.